huge opportunities potentially coming, not unlike what we saw with Oatly. Let's check it out. And then while we're looking at it, we'll do spot the difference with Beyond Meat and Tyson, biggest chicken murderers in the world. Whereas Beyond Meat, they're out here trying to save the chickens. So a battle, a fight to the death competition between these two titanic tickers. We're also going to look at Groupon, ATIP, Carvana, Eve Go, XPEV and Neo. Also Root, BRM, you're getting the freshest information hot off the press. Hit that like button. Can't wait to show you some of these opportunities. Some of them are massive. Load up on guns. We've got Beyond Meat. Now, this is the monthly time frame, and it probably is quite obvious to you, as it is to me, I'll get the entirety of price action on there, that we very rarely have three positive months in a row. We did one, two, three on the inception of this listing. But then subsequent to that, we've never had three positive months in a row on Beyond. We have, though, had three negative months in a row. You get that quite frequently with Beyond Meat. Right, so it has three negative months in a row quite often. That's about average par for the course for this thing. The thing you'd be looking for on the monthly time frame, along with this downward sloping channel, you can see that the top side resistance parallel with the downside support. A couple of positive trades within that move and price action mostly bouncing between these two support and resistance levels. Most recently, fantastic little toolkit here, which is based on body closes on significant time periods. And you can see on the monthly there, you've got your weekly monthlies in at around 960. That's the top side of this downward sloping channel. And that meets a horizontal and diagonal in at around 1st, 2nd of January. That sort of start next year, so a couple of months away. And it would take three positive months, like out towards nine ten bucks that would take three within the channel here you probably would see that sort of range on price action over that period of time so the dispersal of price at three months and that distance in price so potentially a big move but of course it's a downward sloping trend obviously it's a lower low throughout this process and at this point the trend is very much against you in monthly time frame you can't be arguing with that earnings there eighth came out last week 22 percent surprise to the downside and then oof, revenue 12 so significant hit off heart in them at the bottom line revenue also significantly below analyst expectation which will lead to further interest on the short side so we're looking at it here with the monthly time frame let's drop down to the weekly where you can see that most recently you have had this extreme low in price action and then recovery with a body candle closing above the previous negative candles open. So this week here was a proper positive reaction to what was the prior monthly low and still maintain that as the ultimate low in price action so far. So positive recovery within the trend though, that trend being an even more extreme downward slope and resistance line within the overall channel the price action is now testing on this recovery. It hasn't managed to break above it. Anything more than putting in wicks on this weekly time frame. So you're looking for this to turn into something positive and it could potentially be a sloppy head and shoulder. So that reversal, if you just take that away and look at this as a potential shoulder in this too, you could be looking at that as a potential head and shoulders, in which case you get a measured move from the low to the neckline. Take that outside. You can see that it matches up with this prior monthly high and the area of resistance that you can see with regards to the top side of this candle and where price action fell down and it was also previously support when price action was previously at the low side of this downward sloping channel so confluence and an area of resistance at 950 with the top side of that channel when you're looking at it on a weekly time frame potentially going all the way up to 13 if you get a really positive move and with the negative earnings so extremely negative you would be likely anticipating price action struggling against that trend. So down to the daily time frame here, where you again, you've got that clear picture of that downward slope and resistance and why you have that idea of a potential inverted head and shoulders, but it's a downtrend and you certainly haven't had this formation confirmed. The daily time frame, a little bit tough to break out of. You've got a clearer now body close in terms of support and resistance as marked out here by the Rocket Corrupt Toolkit. And you can also see the 236, which is so very likely to be 
the resistance on any inverted head and shoulders, right hand shoulder, you're looking at your 236 from the previous high within the formation down to that low. And a recovery then would be measured against this level at around 750. It's nowhere near there yet. A good 10% need to get to that level. And until such times as it pushes above there, you wouldn't be able to define head of the head and shoulders. You wouldn't be able to define that as a local low until such times as you've made some significant recovery. The four hour time frame, price action body closes obviously here really low at the daily highs. Recently have pushed back above without throughout the week there, all wicks though. And price action definitely finding resistance at that 236 or 750. The area to break on the four hour, which might give you impetus to make it up to around nine bucks, the area to break would be 750. So 10% price action needed from here to reach the area where you would find a breakout. And so it could be that's the fake out area until such times as price action has proved itself to have support. And that support, whoops, a daisy. If you're looking at it beyond me, that support has previously been in at around 640 on the four hour time frame. then. Just get down into these little nitty gritty details here. Here's a four hour time frame where there are a number of things to be worried about. If you're looking for support and this price action would come back down before getting too eager. Of course, if you get the breakout above that resistance level, then price action is heading up to the top side. You've got a gap that starts at eight, closes at 8.13, 8.15, and that would be a huge chunk, you know, 30% plus on price action from here. But if it isn't to break those levels and head to the top side, you'd be looking for support and there's a first gap you've still got to close in at around 650. That could easily come there from here. And in which case, if it's going that direction, there's this huge gap from the impulse move up that closes if price action makes its way back down to five spot 91. So closing price, closing this gap takes price below $6 again. And then you're talking about a 6% move to the downside. And so that would define your risk reward. You wouldn't be able to trade for a move from here if the resistance level and the, the support the support level and that where you, you would be like definitively wrong in the trade is 10% away from your entry, if the reward for getting it right is only 10% to the top side, right? Because then your risk reward is 50-50 and the price action can only go up or down. So the odds are 50-50, in which case you're going to lose money fast if that's your the, the risk reward that you operate from. So you're going to look at this and think it's not really much of a trading zone at the minute on the four hour time frame, and that on all the higher time frames, it's yet to prove itself in any sort of a bullish trend. So you'd have to speculate about the continuation as a trader being very likely in this situation and how we would measure it. We'd measure it back down to these levels. I mean, you could go down to the hourly time frames we're about to do in a minute and measure that distance back down again, we would suggest that it's very dangerous and you would be thinking what's going to go on and put in new lows. But at the minute, you would already be able to say that it hasn't proved itself to the top side. It has got a clear level of resistance. We know what happens if it breaks above there. And in advance of that, the best opportunity is, in fact, if it comes down to oh, reminders, um, congratulations. The best, the best situation here for in terms of a long would be to get more chocolate on your biscuit in at around 580. And then, in which case, if you did have that, you'd also have a clear area for a stop at the all-time low in around 560. And it's 20 cents off the price of 560. You know, you could maybe manage that with a risk-reward ratio on the right edge. It's significantly better than, you know, 50-50. It's difficult to describe this as anything other than as it is a downward slope and trend. You don't have a bull flag. You don't have any confirmed hidden shoulders. And you do have gaps below. Price action normally would fill those gaps four hour daily above, that's where they are. So down to the one hour time frame now, and we'll measure how bad it would be if price action was to fall all the way down here. Just triple check everything here. Okay, right, good. So at this stage, you're looking at what that retracement back down would look like. Rocky Outcrop Toolkit already updated for us. So we don't even need to draw the fib on. Coming in from the low here, taking it to the high within this trend. That was the prior weekly high at that 236 on the previous Fibonacci is also the prior weekly high. Now on this time frame, you can see it clearly. This downward slope and resistance line catches this move back down. We've gone below the 236. I say we, but I mean price action. 382 and a 50% has most recently provided support. But this low here, as you can see where that gap has been left, that was on the reaction from a test of the golden pocket. 
have been put in this high, that was a valid level to see a turnaround in price action. It did so, came back up again. You've put in a triple top and that's part of the trend. The reaction so far is taking you back below the diagonal. Close the first gap, you're on the way to closing the second one. You're likely to close all three of these now. So a retracement below the 786 would be five spot 97. You'd need to get there to close that gap. That speaks to the strength of the move back down. And if it's going to be that far, then you would be looking for the opportunity to be in at around five spot 79, which is why the best entry, you know, isn't even necessarily, but though it is potentially, if you were to scale into the position, then you could maybe use this idea, would be that the gap here, a lot of people would think that you could enter at the liquidity zone, which would be where it closes. But actually, that bit, that for the, but because that's where loads of orders were before that pushed price up, right? And there was pretty obviously post-market activities. But I think that it's much more likely, that you, or much better value, if it is that price action pushes just beyond that area, beyond the 786 and comes in and tests this 886 retracement. Because beyond that, you would think, well, it's gone beyond an 886. It may then just go on beyond the low and create new lows, which gives you an immediate area to manage your risk. The stop loss will go in at the previous low, and then that gives you the best opportunity to catch any move that goes up to the top side and is going to reverse. So if you're looking to get lots of chocolate on your biscuit and you're following trades points, which you clearly are because I haven't given away all these tips, I'm just going to put this video out for members only, Patreon members only, and the Rocky Out Group Discord members only for the first wee period of time. So to reward them, and because this information is brilliant and it'll help people, and also encourage everybody else who sees it later to do that. But I also want to get these videos out there as many people as possible to help grow the community, you know. So all power to everybody watching, no matter when you see the video. Thanks very much. So gaps here, close them. 886 retracement beyond me, potentially come back to 578 for the best potential entry. Obviously, if it just breaks up from here, then you're looking for it to go back above 7... We well, were looking for it on the four hour time frame. You don't want to be looking for it on the one hour. Breaking seven spot 57. Open, close, open on the four hour time frame, which means you're speaking to at least a whole trading day now. Price action doing that, staying there for a whole trading day, then the four hour time frame is broken. And the daily, you'd be looking at that closing then to the top side in around 810, that tiny gap we talked about. And if it does break up, you've got your potential inverted head and shoulders, which takes you to the prior monthly high. And it could well be then that the market looks at that formation in retrospect and thinks, well, this is where we're all targeting, up to around 950, 10 bucks. It may well be that volatility is higher than we've seen so far. And if it is that the average true range keeps increasing, then you would anticipate that volatility measure showing you as a sign that you were going to make it to these levels up towards a 50% retracement or these prior highs, which were previously supported at 950 and the prior monthly high and those important body closes. You might think that that's on the cards sooner than that date we gave at the start of this section of the show about, you know, start of January, because that was in line with the current volatility profile. And obviously if that's going to accelerate and you might get that move and it would take that then to bookend this part of the analysis, it would take that increase in volatility and a distinct trend change in order to string three positive monthly candles together in order to reach that $9.50, $10 target. If volatility increases, it may well see it move up there, bounce away from it. So you'll have to have your orders in in advance in order to take the best potential move there. And if it happens live while you're trading a little bit, off the top, follow up with the stuff. If it keeps going, very good move overall. So it's not financial advice, but it's pro. if it was, that's beyond me. Now we're going to check out Tyson. Damn tech checking murderers. So there is. Anyway, TSN, Tyson Foods. It's 48 spot 74. We'll start as we did on Beyond Me and the monthly time frame, where a very different picture where Beyond Meat has only strung three positive months together and then only gone down subsequently. Tyson, on the monthly time frame, you can see it always recovers any dip and always creates higher highs. It does tend to have these extreme periods of volatility towards its low, it reverses and goes on, creates that higher high. Monthly time frame, you can see that recently coming in and test this horizontal level of support in around 50 bucks or below. That's an important area to look to now. 
having tested it once, twice, three times, four times, five times as support on the way up to this level and beyond. So it's very significant that price has pushed slightly below there. Can get this. Why is it so tiny? Is this price action for ants? Anyway, you're up here now. Congratulations. Higher highs, lower lows. It's price action. <laughs> um, a little bit of a foghorn here. So the price action, it's not the fact that it looks like a foghorn, nor is it whether or not these lines are how they are related to each other. It's the price action and the range is expanding as it's up here. So volatility increasing as price action in this area. And when you would typically look at price at resistance or support, you would see a period of validation where price action would tend to find resistance at a parallel level, along with finding support at a parallel level. And it would be said then that when price actions are either side of that area, that represents the opportunity, right? Because, you know, the trend is sideways. So it isn't like this is the, it's risky when it's down here and the opportunity is when it's up the top or vice versa, right? Because it's both opportunities. You're looking at price action returning to the trend, which is sideways accumulation at the lows and you've got distribution at the highs. You're on the monthly time frame, So that's very significant. And that's going back to 2015. So huge volatility across the piece. These guys pay a dividend of a yield of 4%. Obviously that's significantly lower than you'd be getting on your treasury bonds. But those rates will change on treasury bonds. This will become a more attractive investment for passive income. And therefore, money would gravitate towards these kind of stocks because they've got a very reliable dividend history. Even Tyson Foods, a significant uptrend continues with this potential formation. And that's on the monthly time frame where you can see it is at the low side. And if it is to return back to 50% of this move from the high to the most recent low, then you'd be looking at a move towards 65 spot 48 and we'll drop in a horizontal level there. And that horizontal line, that represents the area of potential support. You wouldn't want to be looking to um, targets that go beyond this level, you know, peaks within price action while it's been in these above 40 and below 100 of the charts and at these levels. You don't want to necessarily be looking at targets above peaks within this formation because that reduces the fidelity of those and then ultimately your trade. So you're looking at this on the monthly time frame, obviously opportunity that is that it'll move back towards that midpoint then. And that measured out perfectly with Fibonacci tool, Rocket Crypt Toolkit, this horizontal level, and we're looking at 65 bucks to be the top side of any target in order to manage our risk in a way that makes sense. Down in the weekly time frame, make this fit on the screen slightly better. That all button has really improved, you know. It used to be it was out designed to, to, to catch you out. Anyway, so these lows, again, really obvious as opportunity now. 886 retracement, we just talked about that. We're taking that low against the wick low of this previous move. Itself is closely divergent. You went after that and put in a higher high. So if price manages to stick above $42, which would be then a clear area for either an entry with a stop managed against this previous pullback. Can you even see that one I drew on? Well, I'll tell you, it's in at around 38 bucks. So an entry as close to that as you could possibly get. 42 looks like a prior low. People previously will be looking at this and see you've got positive candlestick here with a very strong body open and close that encompasses a number of weeks previous moves. I'll zoom in and show you more in a second, but we're focusing on the structure of price action mostly here. And you can see that price action hasn't done anything significant with regards to the overall trend. You can draw a line on here and see whether you take it from these peaks and just go across. You can see that that's valid with three touches. Or you could look at this guy and say, well, most recently profile changed a little bit. You'd say that still, in order to get back to the top side, you're looking to get back above this horizontal and at around 51 bucks looking left, you can see that's important level of support. And when price action does recover above that area, having previously put in a lower low than it did on this part of the trend, it's obviously going to be bullishly divergent. We even need to check. You can see that it's higher than this guy. So that would speak to a potential reversal gain if it is that price action does move up from here and finds some level of resistance at this area, which is 786. Then it could come back down again 
find support in around this previous low looking left and then move up and you'd be looking at that inverted head and shoulders idea again again from the previous chart you were looking at something similar with the downward slope in resistance and then another more steep cutting through it and if it does manage to make it back up it's all about the horizontal level so the formation it creates that's what we're looking at the evolution of that with these different lines and the support and resistance so recovery above 51 bucks that's what you're hoping for targeting it around 65 it may well be that you're looking to take this when it's in a period of potential bullish action so looking for entries once price action has returned above 51 spot 50 using that area as your stop and targeting 65 getting 15 bucks on the trade that you know that's significant out there like you'd be talking about doing that once or twice a month you'd be very rich very quickly so you know you can do that with just manage your risk focus on one ticker at a time be calm investigate and patient with your entries you know so your golden pocket retracement having found a little bit of um, support or resistance previously and most recently here at $60 you could say that risk would change there you would obviously then be looking for extensions up to 65 and you want to justify your risk reward with an entry if it is moving to the top side with 51 as your support and 60 as your target so you're looking for 20 percent on price action that's again huge percentage moves any more than that you'd be greedy so you want to be managing your risk reward within that, ri that opportunity offered by that site if you've not entered it before that's what you'd be thinking. And if it is that you're interested in these things because of... Has my camera just died? It has. If you're looking at these things because of the potential change in rates and you're looking for then long-term stocks that might also offer a dividend, then maybe it is that you're transitioning into stocks that have got obviously a completely different risk profile from something that's zero risk um, in terms of treasury bonds. Obviously you're not, but if you're using that, the majority of people aren't, but if you're using it as a barometer rather than going full-blown into growth stocks, so it may well be that that's the sort of transition period some people take with their money if they go in that sort of, you know, perfectly understandable rate. So, and if you want any more questions, uh, uh, questions answers on that sort of thing, about transitioning your portfolio uh, through this period of the market cycle, then definitely ask me below or in Discord, even better, right? We'll give you a fuller answer and other people chip in too. Links below where my camera just disappeared from there, discord.gg slash rockyoutcrop. Make use of the bigger space here. So... Weekly time frame, we can see again with this big megaphone in price action, you've got a potential opportunity with the fact that prices push slightly lower here and you've market structure gives you a clear area to manage risk if you are looking to a long and that you can see that in historically since price has been in March 2015, 2016, that these areas have represented an opportunity and that opportunity gets increasingly large as this period of price action continues, also gets increasingly precarious in that if it breaks down, it could go really, really low. So you're gonna to need to be looking at the idea of managing a stop. If it goes through these horizontal levels at 38, 39 bucks, I'd be very worried about it because then the previous resistance at the top side might be support and you'd be looking at a test of 24 from significant, right? Because then if it doesn't hold there and you'd be catching a knife, you'd be looking at coming down in the lows there and the impulse move for the breakout in at around 15. Then you're talking about losing 40, 50, 60% off price action. So there's that gap on price action. Yes, we did see that previously and it's left another as it reversed away from it. That would be closed. The first one at 66 bucks. So, so no, that's 58 bucks, 60 bucks. So another reason why price might slow on its ascent to 65 in at around 60 to manage your risk. That gap was at, began at 55 and subsequent to the prices meeting that low side and mo moving away again, it's left another gap. So I'd be looking at 55, clear area of resistance, 60 and 65, really easy to remember. And starting point of opportunity being at around 51.50. 50% retracement on this guy, golden pocket, downward slope and resistance, all of these areas, very interesting because there's also another gap in it around 52. So getting up, you would definitely likely see price action pause when it reached 51 to $52, after which point it'll make a decision. Your risk profile will change. You'd want to have your stop following it because it could easily come back down. If it does break below 48, then it'd be looking at 46 be anticipating it breaking 45 and I wouldn't be looking into that if I wasn't already in it in which case unless it came down and tested in around 42 
or perhaps 44 was managing a stop at that 42 level. So that's where you're getting the best opportunity on this leg of the trend. If you really, really, really wanted to enter it catching a knife, that would be why I'd say wait and be patient. If you are talking about adding to positions or getting bullish on it, then maybe it is back above 52 bucks, 52.50 for a clean move. And you'd be looking at it. Break the prior high at 57, press 60, close those gaps, go on to 65. That'd be good, but you'd have to manage your risk at all of those levels. In which case you'd need to have justify your risk reward for targets at 55, 56, 60 bucks, 65 bucks. You'd have to charge, justify your risk. So Tyson, completely different long-term trends. Down in the four-hour time frame where you've got rocky outcrop flashes, it likes filling these, so it does. You've got that obvious gap back up here. And then if you've got long-term perspective, you're talking about passive income, you're getting 4% dividend yield. You're likely at some point to get an, an, a target, a sale in at around 85 bucks. Assuming the price of the value of money doesn't drop through the floor, i.e. inflation doesn't go insane, then that's, you know, you're looking at huge capital appreciation, 80, 90 percent, along with passive income in the meantime, which with the formation we saw on the monthly is totally possible. And with the markets turning around, offers massive opportunity at very low risk for a historically really strong stock. Tyson, what are you saying? Well, revenue, 2.73% down. Cost optimization though, has allowed 27.79% earnings in above expectations. So the estimate was 29 cents and it came in with 0 0.37. Well done in terms of cost optimization. And in tough market conditions, it's not completely unsurprising to see that shifting consumer preferences that, that may well take a little bit of time for Tyson's selections to catch up with consumer preferences. I imagine with all the brands they own and all their acquisition history in the past, it won't take them too long to buy that shelf space back. That 2.73%, I expect to see that recovery. And it's very positive to see that they've managed to squeeze the margins there an extra 30% on what analysts expected. So... I think that Tyson offers a very long-term, low-risk opportunity, especially if you're managing your risk with those stop areas or just below if you're looking for liquidity zones, right? Even better, more chocolate on your biscuit. And then, wow, if we give myself a repetitive shoulder barrage injury, then if you're looking at Beyond Meat, you've got a huge opportunity. Again, obviously, you've not got any passive income <laughs> opportunities. There'd be massive capital appreciation. Again, it's a completely different profile. You're trading a stock beyond meat that will be attracting a lot of short interest. This is potentially going to go on some further. You've got sideways price action since it put in what is a potential bull flag with a pennant and then price action has gone sideways. At resistance, it's not managed to put in higher highs or lower lows yet necessarily. It's very, very linear, this trend, sideways at price action. And so what we call this here, it's very similar to something I talked about earlier on the show, is consolidation, right? So you've got consolidation at this point here which is consolidation at resistance. Ahead of potentially breaking to the top side if it's accumulation or breaking down and continuing the previous trend if it's distribution. And you would, one of the ways you might look at that is that you've got your 236 from the low to the high of what was potentially a bull flag in at around $10 and 39. Price action has slipped below that. So it's definitely not a high and tight bull flag. You've also got a downward slope and diagonal resistance line there. Price action looks like it's potentially breaking through that. It's still very much sideways. Uh, and all of the support we found in at around the 382, which is also a golden pocket from previous Fib at around 850. And if you're looking at root and you're thinking, is this going to be consolidation or distribution? Could you give you a big warning sign if price action is going to fall down? So if it does break the 382, 50% retracement, that's towards a previous level of support. You would hope for a bounce there. If it doesn't happen and you're looking at a golden pocket retracement at this stage, you're back testing the breakout zone and the impulse move, and it may well be then, with this downward slope and diagonal, with price action not managing to go through the full positive move of a pennant, and then defeating the idea of a bull flag, it may well be that it comes down to test that impulse move and retest in at around $6, which is where you find the golden pocket on route. So that could be the bearish first move if you see a breakdown here. It could well be that it comes down, bounces off the bottom side of that support test, close to the 50% and then starts moving back up again. You see it put in another test of $14 in this high, at which point you'd be looking at the potential for a double top and continuation back down again. So if you're not looking at continuation, 
then you're going to be hoping for price action to break through resistance and then use it as support as opposed to knock on it at every level when it goes to the top side, which will increase the short side positions on this stock. Instead, you'd want it to defeat those shorts. You'd want their stocks to be triggering price to move higher and then for it to be finding support at those levels that could have been anticipated to be resistance or even proved to be so ahead of it. So you really want Root to be start proving itself and part of the reason for that is because of the fact that it came through such a strong, relentless downtrend in order to make this move. But you have to manage your risk and you have to be aware of what's going on with the chart. Subsequent to that price action, we saw it was breaking down. We talked about it. There we said you could even see it in at around 350. That doesn't hold. We'll be looking at two. Bounce from 350, broke out the downward sloping channel and you put in that bull flag. And at this stage, a lot of people have managed to make it 14, 15 bucks back to what is then their overall entry if they weren't using a stop. There's all of these questions about um, how do you manage a position that goes underwater if you're not holding a stop and you have to adjust your targets on these trades. You have to adjust your targets, work out the, the way that you'll be managing the capital in the trade and where it is that you're happy to take profit if it is that price starts moving to the top side. And I always advise people not to add money to losing trades but to be able to manage the risk with a stop loss. Very true then that this is a tough time for consumer credit in America. It's also true that the markets are improving and that the Fed may raise or pause the final rate rise of the year and then we'll be looking at what happens in January, February. And it may well be that if we're facing a period of disinflation, which is what's off the back of the decreasing inflation it's potentially looking like we're going across the pivot point and in a little bit of deflation and the fed are going to have to start changing their policy with regards to maintaining higher rates for longer which is obviously the rhetoric they need to use right now and if that does happen then there'll be an easing across sectors like this where part of the negative sentiment that affects root is the low value of u.s savings accounts and because this is so, so low, the danger of premiums going up could knock customers out of the chain and could have effect on the bottom line of these companies. And it's true, very, very true in the EV market. And then there's a knock on again for insurance companies. So there's things to be aware of with regards to the sentiment around these companies. But then Root, having put in such an explosive move to the top side, consolidating at this level could break up again. If you see it breaking down, I'd expect it to come back and test the impulse move, the breakout perhaps even go down and test the area where it made its move out of this downward sloping channel in at around 430, 440. Again, it's a huge chunk of price action. So you have to be careful with that, but there are ways of managing your risk, of course, over and above stop losses. I'm happy to keep looking at route for everybody's in it, and I'll do my best by you. CV, any, this fun, fun Carvana. We've called so many huge moves, as you can see here. Just a couple double check, just you know, trace button does like to do it again. This was a 1,546% move we called. Fantastic there. A lot of people try to ride off my coattails off that on Twitter. You'll have noticed those losers. And then, you know, you have just at the back end of it there, I distinctly remember telling people who hadn't got in, they could still get in 762% move there. That's fantastic. It's not like we're only bullish because we did talk about the resistance when we first started talking about Carvana and how it was very, very dangerous at this level. 76 bucks and again some people just couldn't help themselves anyway so right you're looking at this three bucks brillant move managed to put in a squeeze take it all the way up to 50 dollars and change this company's got strong strong fundamentals but then the market itself bottom keeps falling out of it the debt situation here fluctuates between well covered but to critical so issues with carvana anywho Price action did make an explosive move. We're on the daily time frame here. Let's go up to a weekly Carvana weekly time frame. You got this idea of the sloppy head and shoulders. We talked about this on an other chart earlier today. So you had this and you had your measured move off the back of it, which I'll draw with a trend line here from the low to the neckline, which is also this downward sloping diagonal. It's approximately something like this and take it over to the drop on the breakout point, which is also breaking above a 236, which was also where you find the downward slope and resistance. And now again, you're seeing a lot of things match up across the charts this evening. Price action made it to these top side moves. And this is the weekly time frame, obviously, but it's showing a similar picture to what's going on on the root chart. Now, Carvana hold financial contracts which have implications for root. So when Carvana does well, root tends to have a little bit of a boost too. 
Carvana then putting in the same idea of potentially consolidation at resistance. Does it start going sideways here, as we saw in the root chart? It has got a prior monthly high and low to break through if it does want to go through either side of that and could well bounce between them a few times, having seen the measured move from the previous variation and now put in consolidation at a potential level of resistance. That could be what's happening. You look left, you can see that again at that area in price action, there was the same thing. Volatility, strong bounces, support at that area. The double bottom here, the W. And all of those orders at those areas on the order books will be adding to the interest at the same areas nowadays. So price action breaking back above those levels very tough, although a lot of people want to see it. You would say then top side resistance, likely 54, support in the short term in at around 25. Price action much closer to the 25 than the 54. If we go down to the four hour time frame then, see a flashback on route. This is not official data I'm using at the minute. So you're in around 450. That is the air. It's not route either. It's Carvana. Anyway, that is what you're looking at in terms of the previous breakout and the downward slope information. If price action falls back down, then tests of 650 and 475 on Carvana, not out of the question at all. Do you even get a double bottom in that formation? Don't necessarily predict that from here, but of course, there are lots of possibilities. At this stage, I'd be looking about price action, trying to hold the 236 of this fib and 382 of this guy that's from the ultimate low and this is from the breakout point you but hold that which you probably do in around 24 25 bucks and then you're looking there's a hundred percent move up towards 54 on that close to 100 percent move that's not bad stuff trace butter that's not close that's over you're looking at a potential move then of 100 percent when price action isn't necessarily even breaking the trend it's on the four hour time frame and that's a couple of different tickers you've seen tonight with that. And the structure and the formations that you're seeing on price action are the main thing to take away. The comparative aspect of each of those charts, despite them being in different sectors, some of them is very, very similar lessons to learn. Those that are in similar sectors have got similar charts and some of them have got a financial dependency on the other ticker that we looked at. So, you know, there's opportunities there. If one moves first, then you'll know the other one's going to take the next move. You'll be able to take an advantage of that news, right? You know, be able to see it, hear it, you'd be able to be first to it. Carvana starts moving, Root starts moving. Oatly's going is beyond meat going to go. Hit the like button. If you want to support this show, the links are in the, the description below. Thank you very much for everybody who does. I'm back, but the question is, Neil back on the lips of every investor looking at earnings and revenue. Here you can see most recently, disappointment in terms of earnings down 10% beyond what our analysts expected. Surprise, also in revenue, 5% down. And that is a trend they expect to continue. Consensus of around 20% less in the next earnings call. People anticipating things being pretty tough. But on the other hand, on the monthly time frame, you can see the TA that we've got in here with price action to identifying this important horizontal level when the very beginning of Neil's listing and then when it came up and tested that horizontal level again got a rejection put in what turned out to be so far the ultimate low the recovery on this guy gave you an inverted head and shoulders just draw that on so that you got it point out left shoulder head right shoulder you broke through that neckline and then you got your measured move back up again to this important level of horizontal resistance you went through that, came back, body close on that level. That's how significant $11.95, $12, $0.10, that sort of zone. That's how important that is. Then you came back and tested it again on the next body close. This is a monthly time frame. You found that here, at the open, pardon me. Price action moving to the top side. And then when you came back down at this horizontal level again is where you found a bounce. The low oscillation within this formation. When you broke through the center line, that was where you found support. Again, then, when price action broke below it, that was resistance. And then again, you saw that most recently. So do you think the chances are that next time price action gets here, that's where you find it slowing down in at around $12? I would suggest it's very likely. If you find support at what is the basis line of this strangely expanding formation here, then you probably would be anticipating resistance being around that diagonal tank. Now, probably thinking two, three months out, $12, that would be not completely unbelievable based on what we've seen here on the monthly time frame. Let's drop now down to the monthly, pardon me, the weekly. Also making the point that in and around these levels, price action has to also go above 50% retracement. It's about eight spot 68. 
And in advance of that, you'd like it to hold the golden pocket retracement at the same Fibonacci, which is obviously where you broke out from the neckline on that inverted head and shoulders previously. So that's where you do not want price action to slip too far down, right? You're already at seven spot 39. Terrible news. You don't want to drop below. No, oh, it was 50% retracement. Yes, yeah, it's the golden pocket. You don't want to drop below here at the neckline, five spot 40. Price action at a double bottom here from May's lows and around that $7 target has got to that sort of level already. So the opportunity has begun if you're looking at this horizontal level, which is relevant, even though it's between two fibs and it is below an important level of previous support and resistance at 12 bucks. So do you come any lower? You being the price action, does it come any lower to this golden pocket before it turns around? Very likely that it would find some sort of support in around 550 down to 475 those sort of prices that's probably the best entry on the chart if price makes its way down again to find these sort of levels and you get an entry long entry in or around there it's not financial advice this trace button you could be using the entirety of the golden pocket to manage your risk in terms of your stop but i would suggest that you actually whoa well that changed its mind pretty sharpish you want to uh, manage your risk not with the golden pocket and the 618 as the entry and exit but if this would stop being so annoying keeper creepers right so you get this there yeah gotcha gotcha buddy so there's your stop bottom side perhaps your entry i mean if you're looking at entering right now then you could be looking at the golden pocket and trying to use it because price action likely does push towards those levels. It's a huge chunk off in terms of percentage move. So it, it kind of destroys the whole integrity of the trade, if you ask me. But if you're already in the position, then $12 is the target to look to in terms of managing your risk. If price action breaks above 1436, then it and it closes a weekly time frame then and starts opening above $16, the next target is 25 and it could well be that price action is making its way towards 50 on NEO if it does start a real strong trend. It's just in at around 12. It tends to come back to that level like a magnet and test it before it does move either extreme side. And dude, that's the question we're asking at the minute. Not does price action go beyond there, but in terms of the risk profile, but does price action make its way up to 11 $12, which from you know the potential entry in at around 6 because you're already at that previous low and you'd be looking for price section either to break back above 892 and take that tiny way trade to the top side or you'd be waiting for well, it's quite a big trade actually or you'd be waiting for it to break down below this previous low in a liquidity zone maybe even as far as the golden pocket and then move back up again so i'd be looking at the golden pocket there and trying to use that as my stop loss i don't think i'd need to go to the full extent of that golden pocket just the gold just the 618 because you'd be then below the neckline of the previous formation. That was a reversal formation. So I'd take that to be definitively important. I'd have my stop at it. And then I'd look for an entry using, um, we'll just go with a retracement to use this kind right now. Probably look for 1.13 on this guy, 6 spot 64, and then try to, how much is that? It would be a big enough. Yeah, shocking. Shocking, shockingly large risk rewards. You know, the truth is you want to be getting that as close as possible. So maybe you'd be looking at the 1.14, taking it beyond this area. Saying, right, maybe even not wait to the 618. Maybe, maybe not wait, maybe wait beyond it and take it price action from in there in these levels. That may be the lowest possible risk, uh, the highest possible risk reward and still making uh, use of that area for your entry. Or alternatively, you do take it from the more likely bounce zone and then you're scaling in with a lower overall position size and managing your risk that way as a proportion of your total portfolio. And it may well be that you're doing that. If we're talking about price action and the structure of price action to define these trades, then you know, it may well be you're looking at that high level. So you're talking about the weekly time frame and high levels. Let's talk down to the daily where these circles now loom large over price action. Do we have... Gaps, we do, yes. First one, 964, that's two bucks 30 from where you are at the minute, and that being 739, huge huge percentage moves just to take you back up and not even defeat structure. In terms of this downward slope and diagonal, I don't think you've got anything significant going on there. It's mostly 
the fact that price action has come back and, and tested this low, this low divergent, I imagine it was in a series, then you managed to break back to the top side. Probably because using Ron Rocky uh, outcrops adapted fib channels for this. If you're looking at this, it's all about the horizontal levels and the move back to the top side. It'd obviously be saying that there's a potential for a bounce immediately, but in terms of measuring the strength of that, it's definitely this fib. Got it drawn in already on the right hand side here. Rocky outcrops fib 86 moving back down again, and uh, it's all from this low to this peak in price action. As you can see, same numbers. So you've got to make about 86. Maybe you're talking about also a 236 from this guy and taking it from the high to the low. Maybe a seven eight six. You're talking about breaking back above eight fifty. Eight fifty prior weekly high, and like it's. I mean, it's just not enough to break structure. So it's not even like it's definitely in something like this at the minute. Um, and and if you are looking to break that, you're going to have to hope for doubling of the liquidity expressed within that range you're going to, which is asking so very much with regards to the volatility profile changing you, you, you know so you well maybe you don't but what i'm saying is if you want price action from here to reverse structure and move to the top side it's going to take an outsized move and would you get that well it's potential because you came back you got it previously at this support level it's just that you didn't break the overall macro structure as a reaction so you're back testing that same level again it, it, it's true to say that People who entered here before at seven bucks, they made plenty of money, 100% trade, were able to take profit. And it could well be then that um, you know, it hasn't defeated that thesis. It could well be, though, if it does break below it, if they didn't take profit, you know, anyone who was looking there, they'll stop out. Anyone who's entering again for the same trade will probably provide liquidity and it could push it down to, you know, further than just beyond this level i.e. just beyond a 1.13 into these sort of zones where you get a better value entry. And then from that sort of area, especially if scaled in, then you can manage it with a stop following it as pullbacks, beyond pullbacks, and then you could well be taking advantage of a bigger move later on. But you justify the trade with the risk-reward setup that's available on the chart at the minute, regardless of where it is you entered it or what you're doing with your overall position. And that's what it looks like the best place to me. So that's down to the daily, onto the four-hour Oh, those gaps still there back below you. Have you got anything to worry about? Most recently filled in a gap, so that's not a problem. And yes, well, earnings not for a while then. Coming in at around December the 23rd. For March 24th, right? So they've already had their earnings then. September. See them to the start of next year. That gives it enough time to fail, move to the top side and fail in at around 12 bucks. That would be a lower high. Could even see it push back up and test something in around an 886 from this guy down. Probably around 1484. And that would be with it breaking out of that downward sloping resistance line that we've gone on the charts there. But again, putting in a lower high. So not breaking structure. Or even to get there, it has to do something out of the ordinary. To break out of the formation at the minute wouldn't be enough to take it beyond the area where you find a lot of sales in at around 960, 975 for a previous um, gap and that artifact will have a lot of interest with price action should make it up there so neo right we've got a lot of information here again a comparative chart and we can go from neo over to xpev so this is important area and a similar situation with regards to that horizontal price action that's been very very important throughout the entirety of this history of this stock so Back to this circle make the same point that we were making before you had it launched and then it found an area of support whereas neil you were looking at resistance at this point you're talking about in terms of support price actually went back above that level you're still within the approximate range of it in this retest so people would debate that then back here you've got two touches where obviously it was providing support still price action approaching from the top side oops daisy got back in the box please and then over here, you know, I could have dropped it on this wick, but we don't want to labour the point too much. That was the immediate break. Down point, and then obviously then again, as you can see, and it's not like he takes Mystic Meg to work where I'm going to drop this one out. Come on. You know, you found resistance again at that level. So if it is that the price action is pushing back up again, then you'd likely find resistance again in at around 1950, 20 bucks. And if it is that you're not going to, you know, you've got already got the start of a downtrend. If you see that continue, then the important area for it to hold would be 13.13. 13. You've already tested it once. It's the prior 
low, monthly low from previous month there. If you break down, you'll be going back below this breakout level from the prior formation, which would be very critical because then you'd be continuing formation that's put in macro lower highs and then broke through the important level with regards to price of this initial listing and put in this lower low. And the question would be, you'd put in a, a lower high, you're going to put in then a subsequent further low, which would be price action looking towards testing 575, 679 down to 575. Those areas would likely be tested if you see it slip below $12 again, right? That would be very, 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 very possible. And you have to be weary of that long term on XPEV. But if you are talking about things moving to the top side, then you'd be speculating from the weekly onwards about having held a positive formation, having pushed to the top side, you know, in terms of recovery from this, you're looking at an actual harmonic form in there as well. But let's look at this in terms of this horizontal and we'll take this fib out of the picture. We don't need him anymore. And we're measuring the move back against this trend. We can also take this guy out of the picture. So you're looking about this move here and moving back up, testing that very important level at $19.50, $20 means getting back above the golden pocket over here. We tried it once, I say we XPIV, 786 and then a rejection back below that important horizontal. So any pushes up need to not exceed just 20. They need to go back above this prior high at 23.27 and then you really need to conquer 30 bucks, which is the downward slope and diagonal on the weekly and the monthly and furthermore, you've got this 886 retracement looking left, which is part of this lower high sequence. And so high probability that you see a little bit of resistance there. So I'd say that if you are looking at XPeng, then you're probably ideally getting it in this formation, which is most recently put in, you know, a high followed by a lower high followed by a lower high with lower lows, which gives you, you know, I'm not necessarily saying you're going to get this and not a third touch of it on here but if you did right, it would be in line with this idea and then anywhere in around the basis line or the prior monthly low or another touch in line with that linear downtrend so the support on that might come in as low as 10 bucks you definitely don't want to be going back below these prior highs though I mean the chart's getting messy but you see the things I'm adding now you don't want to be dropping below there um, and if it is that you meet that in line with this linear downtrend, then you're looking to get this between 10 and 12 bucks, then the target is around 19.50 to 20 bucks. And that's the way of measuring, ma managing your risk based on the artifacts that are currently on the chart. Um, if you've already got a position, then you've got to um, bear in mind that price action could break down. You've got, if you're managing that with a stop and it's all, you're not in profit at the minute, then I'd be very careful. If you are in profit, then congratulations, you can follow it with a stop. And enter it now. But this is a, a potential trade, given your risk reward ratio. If you were to draw it a little bit stricter, you could probably get more, but it's approximately eight to one. You want to be targeting the top side of this formation. 95, 19 spot 50 would be great, but you want to be targeting in around 15 bucks and try to get it as close to the entry, as close to 10 as possible, because when it goes back below those levels, that's when you know you're wrong. And they could well then be coming back and testing, like I'm saying, in at around five. 575, those, those sort of low. So XPEV it has got a potential formation turn around. It has got a harmonic. It has got, looks like it has a couple there. This obviously needs to get back above like the critical level on this formation for it not to be a complete fake out and just liquidity hunt back to the top side. And the reason it could be a liquidity hunt and because this is a lower low and like it all went through that important horizontal. So this could just be a distribution and in which case that would likely then be demonstrated with a, a failure at around $30. And if it does fail at $30, then I think, yeah, you know, that would be distribution. So I'd be worried about it coming back to these levels, but at the minute it's putting in positive formation. It does look like it wants to try up 230 and that from here at the minute be a 100% move on price action. So like, you can't sniff at that. Wow, XPEV and NEO together could inform each other quite greatly then both big potential moves and both signaling where it is that they'd find important areas of support. So the risk is easy to manage and therefore it's easy to define. If you can wrap that in a history, because you're probably not going to make billions between now and Tuesday, then, you know, you could probably turn out to be really, really rich. If you just got a good plan, I can help you come up with them. Links in the description. Didn't I say that? Links in the description. Go, Eve, go, Eve, go, Eve, go, Eve, go to 350, please. Merica, some fantastic TA on this guy. You had... 
potential reversal candle there, a little bit of indecision on that doji. But then this guy body closing and around the basis line of that channel, if we extend it, fantastic performance, wicking above, taking out an important, looks to be close to a gold deposit retracement. Slap that guy on, double check. And around 50%, three spot 53, great. So you manage to get above there, then you'll be pushing towards four bucks. Continue that channel again. This is a very strong channel. It's had a number of fantastic trades off the back of it. You can see that it's very likely that it does continue to the top side if it manages to break the basis line. That's been the way of it so far with this thing. When it manages to go through, it usually goes on to the other extreme, goes through here, at least tries for it. Uh, you failed to make it back above. It's obviously pushed back down again and then you actually got it, you know? And then the reaction after it held support, you got it on the other side and you can tech for yourself, but that obviously continued and you got exactly the same pattern every time. When you fail at the center line, come back and test that same level of support and or resistance after which you're nearly definitely going to go on through so the question is does this close back above the basis line on that channel which you would do on a weekly time frame open close open above three bucks then you'll hit 350 and the chances are it probably goes on and tries to test towards four at least that's been the history of its behavior in the past so that you can't rely on that and this isn't financial advice it does seem that structurally that would be what it's inclined to do previously if obviously then you're looking at it long term, you'd have to hope that it breaks this channel and starts making moves back against its ultimate Fibonacci. You could be measuring it against that top uh, high at the start of this formation. I'd say that it needs to break its back way back above 550, 886 at five bucks, five bucks to 550. If it does start to open and close weeklies above there, then you know, eight bucks. 12 bucks and then it would be targeting up towards 20 but the immediate targets are breaking the basis line on this channel which is three and then targeting top side maybe four <laughs> so a bit reserved compared to those higher levels but then that's what price action has been doing it provides us with fantastic opportunity because the percentage moves are very very high a lot of people on the channel took this entry in around two bucks and so they're already up 50 percent on that Fantastic. Congratulations, everybody. Following along, making lots of money. Boom. That's the weekly time frame. Down to the daily. Get a little bit of a picture here. You've got flashes. Three spot 56 flash there, Rocky Outcrop. Flash, get an indicator at patreon.com slash Rocky Outcrop. I advise you do. You also get the Rocky Outcrop toolkit and access to the Discord. It's fantastic. All the coaching that comes with that and the community. Fantastic value. You definitely should get it. So the flashes on this full time. This looks like a really easy trade in the golden pocket up towards 386. That's a step between those two previous important targets for our time frame. We've already held that basis line. Look, your wick below and support at it. You had a gap that took you back down here. That test is back above a previous gap, but you've had one pushed back above it, two pushed back above it. And while you still have a little bit of an area of potential liquidity that could be tested in at this gap, and then again, in at this gap, that's what it does when it's moving to the top side. It's actually more likely to go back on and test those prior highs if it finds support at this diagonal, which is also where the basis line of the overall channel is. So it's a very strong entry now in and around these areas. You can easily manage a stop with the wick low of that previous move or the basis line of this channel even tighter. And then you'd be targeting 340, 10% move off the back of this thing, 20% easy peasy Japanesey up there at Lemon Squeezy, which is the right word. What's socially appropriate the minute you look at it for 420? 420, but we said 350 and like, you know, could get exciting on Eve Go. And if it does break to the top side, long term trends, those big targets, there's something to aim for. But I'd be following it with a stop loss beyond all important pullback targets because it's volatile and that range and trend, very, very strong regime regime at the moment. So Eve Go, nice little kicker on at the back of the Neo and XPEV. And now, for something completely different, Groupon. Groupon Inc. This huge gap here on the four hour time frame. I'm going to go back up and start on monthly. Keep with the format we've been following so far. And it's quite good then because you get to see this obviously strong downward sloping resistance, which has been over the entirety of price action on Groupon. Strong IPO 
triple value this very high. Thought it was the new way of buying things. Like, you know, we buy any, what was it called? Let's buy dot com or whatever, right? Web, web van, you know. It's a brilliant business and no one will ever come up with a business as good as this. The hype was insane, so it was, right? So it made a golden pocket retracement there and then went on to put in a lower low. That was the previous low, lower low. And since then, it's been in that downward sloping trend. Very important resistance level there. And you can see when you found support, that was obviously breakdown level at such a distance again. So in at around 17 bucks is resistance on Groupon and on the monthly time frame. On the weekly, you can see then this downward sloping channel, the regime there pretty clear. You can see who's in charge, right? It's the people that are dominating the price action and supplying that trend from the top side of this resistance level, which is meeting the golden pocket and a prior monthly high in at around 20 bucks. So asking it to push much above 22 from here is asking a lot. Obviously, that's 100% up from where it is at the minute. And price action having pushed higher did give you the potential, you know, tweezer bottom here, potential for a reversal coming in and testing support. You would say, is this also an inverted head and shoulders? And you would say no, because this left shoulder, that right shoulder, that's wrong for a start. And then that's what, that's the neckline. That's, that's very wrong. You know, like the slope on this counter to the downward slope and trend here. Typically, you know, top tip, right? Anyone on the course, is a top tip for you on the course. If you're not on the course, right? Look away, avert your eyes. Don't look, you know, the, the, it's a reverse, reversal formation is a head and shoulders. And an inverted head and shoulders comes at the bottom of a downtrend, how you reverse back to the top side. And if you're gonna be doing that, then you'd want it to be ideally very, very clean cut formation. But if it is gonna be sloppy, then ideally, that sloppiness would be in line with the trend. So the downward slope and resistance would lead you to having a left hand shoulder and then a slightly lower right hand shoulder. And all of that would probably then rest underneath what was the previous level of support. And then you'd be getting liquidity and price action reversal from that area. You explain there how that formation works. Very, very helpful. Extra little tip for people watching along this far into the video, however long it is. I don't know, it's about eight weeks I've been making this thing. Oh my goodness, the different. Anywho, right, so thank you so much for <laughs> watching. And yes, let's do this. You really, I'm really proud of everyone who's making moves at the minute. So they're all doing great, right? So it's Groupon going to do great. That's the question. Four hour, no, we're on the weekly. Super daily. Oh, lots of different drawings. Flashes to aim for in around 1763. Touched that previously. It's come back down. Bit of a gap. Fill that gap, you'd have to go back above a 236. That's a 10 spot 81. Price action is a little bit of risk here. If it does drop below 8 spot 40, then I'd be anticipating it coming all the way down, testing 558 and then this lower side of this channel. So group on. If it doesn't move back up, I'll test it at 1081 and close that gap and push towards 13 or above, then I'd be temporarily bearish on it and waiting for it to move back down towards 560. So I'd be managing my stops quite close to price action if I could possibly do that. And if my position allowed for it, otherwise I might look for other ways to manage risk. And if you want to let me know, ask me about that, just do, and I will do my best to help you. So yes, the area to be looking for is you would be anticipating price moving up again. Maybe you're waiting then to enter until it's back at 15 bucks and targeting something like 100% move in the, t in the context of a, a breakout trade to the top side and a reversal being confirmed that we'd have to find support here for that in order to be true. So if you want a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, maybe you've got an entry really close to where price action is at the minute with a stop beyond $8. That would be the previous low there. And uh, if that doesn't hold, then you've got a golden pocket re-entry that matches the bottom side of that channel and providing a massive risk reward opportunity that's in line with the previous aspect of the trend and then does give you that inverted head and shoulders with the sloppy right hand shoulder lower than the left in line with the downward slope and trend. So you have a reversal formation that's appropriate ahead of a breakout formation that would take you to the long term downward slope and resistance. So a really, really clear good trade there potentially as long as, you know, the people running this company don't end up in jail or whatever, which I mean, duh, not interested in defaming anyone or and I'm not going to be doing this. So, you know, it has happened before, you know, has happened before, isn't it? Right, hasn't it? Groupon. Right, so thank you very much. That was Groupon. Oh, this is, we're flying through these amazing, amazing work now. 
next one on the list. Oh my goodness, is this really, are we really down at the next one? Thank goodness, ATIP. Right, so if you ever wanted a ticker to fill you up, ATIP, if you look at all this, wow, the TA here, it's a bit, a little bit, they've had a readjustment or my drawings all just decided to migrate talking about this. right so we'll just go down to the yeah it looks like all the drawings have decided to I mean if I can select all drawings that would be nifty just move everything well let's just um start again drawings on this guy shall we I'll just click all of you guys thank you very much right so you know let's draw Basis line, important levels with regard to your rocket launch rocket completely jumping out at them. Get on here and fit on properly price action. There you go, good one price action. Right, so this clear here where you're looking to in terms of resistance levels within the prior trend, which all met this basis line and didn't manage to get above it. Price action has done so and found support on it, but it's still downward sloping. And then you're looking at horizontal levels left, haven't provided support so far, giving you a 680 as a potential entry you don't want to be holding this below six bucks so that's a whole 10 percent between that potential entry and stops just too much so you likely want it this 650 somewhere around there as a stop and then try the same thing again lower around six bucks if you're desperate to do that otherwise you're looking for this thing already in it managing a position targeting to the top side hoping it breaks above eight bucks pushes towards nine after which you could potentially get another test of the top side of this downward sloping channel. So in around 13, 14 bucks on ATIP. After the adjustment, um, all the previous drawings have gone off the charts. But I obviously was aware and caught a glimpse of the potential for huge moves. We have discussed before the issue with the business model that applies to these sort of local, regionally serviced, customer-facing businesses where the entrepreneur is responsible for running a franchise, but then the customer loyalty is to that person as opposed to the brand value. And that presents difficulties for businesses such as this and growth. And then when they do get growth, but that growth is financed by borrowing, when their environment turns tough, it gets really tough for them. So you've got this downward sloping trend, right? That's a manifestation of that issue for this particular business. If it does manage to move to the top side, then that trend could persist and you could still see prices up at around 12.50 testing the body closes of the prior high, put in a lower high, I not escape the not escape back above 14, 50, 15 bucks. So now go back above the prior wick. And then you'd have to be careful managing your risk on that thing. If we are then talking about this in terms of top side coming down, two, three, six, risk really tough there around 17 bucks. So we would not rule out it getting there. But that would constitute like breaking out of this channel and then finding a fake out. So if it does break out and you're thinking, wow, well, this is it, it's broken down sloping channel. Now the sky's the limit. Well, that actually the limit probably is 1770 immediately. Beyond that, then you're looking at um, 25 bucks, important level of resistance and support. I'll drop in the horizontal, probably better than that squiggly green line. At these levels, you're really thinking profile risk profile on this thing's changed and you'd need to be following it with a stop loss that was going, you know, previous resistance, now support, and you're having a pullback stop loss strategy, you'd want it in around behind that pullback, right? That's how the stop loss works. And then maybe you'd be adding on extra little tips and tricks. A 50% retracement, also confluent with that prior high, as you can see. So if it goes really, really crazy, 60 bucks, we'd have to have a reason for it going there. Perhaps that would be something. 8.33% today. Well, it is possible. Market cap on it's only 30 million. So you could fit this thing in your pocket. Average daily volume is 7.168k. That's about what it costs for a lollipop nowadays. And then the volume in order to get that approximately 8.3%, close to a 10% rise, you only needed 8.247 thousand. So, so what, very, very low, you know, very, very low. Um, only a thousand dollars worth of trades and this thing trading at seven bucks means somebody buying you know what's that 120 of them so sheesh 
getting that on a leverage account. <laughs> you know, it's a very, very small company. It's very small market cap. You can push it around with very, very little. And um, so people may well be doing that. They could also push it. People obviously could push it others around. You, you would be very careful about swim with the fishies. Swim with the big fishies in their wake here. And follow it to the top side safer and then target in those areas. So we wouldn't be trying to desperately add to the position. It would be very much wary of it breaking down further. So I'd be very careful to take profit and I wouldn't put too much of my fortune in this until such times it started moving. Then I'd be managing it so carefully and closely. So pay attention if it does do that. Daily time frame, you've got a flashback up there at 50 bucks. So that's why the top side is possible. And you've got another one up there, crazy levels. Whoa, pay attention to those first ones ahead of us before we do get crazy, but that is possible. Anyway, but no, talking about price action structure from previous behavior and where it is safe to manage your portfolio long term because of the opportunity cost itself is immeasurable over your trading lifetime. So these are the levels to look to and that's what to think about on ATIP. Holy sugars, we are flying and now we're into VRM. Is this it? And then the cryptos and they're moving tonight. No, we're not looking at. Oh, we are looking at Vroom. Oh, I thought, uh, is this really what we're looking at? VRM? Vroom? Is that, have I got the right thing written down here? It wasn't, it's not virtual machines. We're not looking at, okay, anyway, VRM, it's, that's what we're on. May well be, I've made a mistake. If that's the case, get back to me. Monthly time frame. Vroom. Right, that's shocking, pal. Oh, you can't park there, mate. Right, so monthly time frame. Uh, this guy behaving. Very anti-socially here. Uh, whew. Vroom. What are you trading at? Zero spot seven. So they'll have a delisted notice if they don't get back above one buck. Current market cap, 100 million. So this is not all that different. Three times market cap is the thing we were just looking at. But a lot of people have heard of Vroom. Daily average volume significantly higher at 3 million. Only 1.6 today. So half of its typical volume today took 3.3% off. I say today, but it was Friday, the last day that it was trading. This video is coming to you. We made it late on the Sunday evening. So this is what we had previously on Vroom. Get back above here. Made a move. I'm on the monthly time frame. We'll just go down and show you where it was that trade. You know, everyone's excited about it. There was the gap price action here. Looking left, you can see that target back on the rocky outcrop flash. And then we looked at perhaps extending beyond that based on harmonic targets. And then boom, price section from the entry. Never went back, went through the gap to the top side. 186% move. And that video was on a five tickers, five minutes. <laughs> Whoa, they were exciting, right? So you've got gaps left on that move to the top side. Uh, when it came back down again, Golden Pocket meets the bottom side of the line at 170. That's 100% on price action from here. You've got a gap much closer to price action. We should close on our test of the 236 at 99 cents. That's obviously very close to one buck. That's a round number. It's obviously where they also get achieved back at their compliance with the NASDAQ $1 per share. And it's likely resistance. So I'd be weary of that. This Fibonacci. Don't need him. Rock out crop toolkit doing the hard work for us. So it's 236, it's aiming for a $1 clear target. You don't want to go back, you, you, vroom, vroom. Papa, Nicole, you don't, Papa does not want to see Nicole below zero spot seven. That would be dodgy. You know, why can't you just make someone responsible, Nicole, right? It's too much stress, all right, for Papa. He doesn't need any of this. So relax, it's vineyard, misty autumn morning. It's winter now, it's winter. Anyway, poor, poor Papa. So you're looking at that up at around... One buck is the target. You don't want to drop below. You lose four or five cents off this. Gets a little bit scary if that's the case. If it does move to the top side and close that gap and then break out, you don't have a previous. Like you don't. You're not doing that off the back the bottom and formation. There's no reversal formation there. It's just that it's come back and tested the previous low. So it's get a little bit of interest because of that. That'd be why. And the gap to the top side is a part of a series of gaps, which speaks to the strength of that trend to the downside that even did even when price action moved counter to that downward move with force it didn't manage to get back to closing the gap and never even got back to the bottom side of that gap and same thing's true with this most recent high so downward slope and trend continuation of a trend in motion four hour time frame 
Ooh, doesn't look too good. So to so, so you, sir, well, this high here being an 886 of the important level here. Cha-cha, cha-cha, 86. What an high. Prior weekly high. Bum, 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 he probably doesn't know it. The breakdown on this thing was heralded by that candle and then the impulse moved down again. The resistance that you've already found on a retracement followed by closing that gap suggests that it could well test that those previous lows at zero spot seven. And if it is to push lower than that, 1.13 liquidity zone in at around target of zero spot six, that could be where it comes down to testing there. Zero spot six four to zero spot six could be the next level of support. If a vroom vroom breaks down, if it is breaking down that low, then you're likely going to see some sort of a short squeeze. It'd be a little bit silly, to be honest. A little bit silly. Another short squeeze on vroom vroom. Very possible. I mean, that fell off a cliff there, so, you know, we'll attract attention. So, yeah, if it does come down here, I'd expect it to bounce. I don't know if it's necessarily going to do the same massive, huge moves before, but it would probably be a big percentage bounce. Hmm. Not that that's, you know, that's not to say. So I wouldn't put all my trades on that line I just drew. I would not would be not secure enough. But if you put it all together, there is a potential for it to bounce in around six, zero spot six two. If it does push those down to those levels, obviously that's very low. It would represent a new all time low. And these guys probably be forced into some form of corporate action on top of everything they've already done would lead to. Um, increased liquidity in the share side. So you'd have to wonder the implication of that for the marketplace. Might be that that news made it so that $1 becomes $1 depending on how they decide to handle things. It's very important. Though you did have, you know, put this in context, we go back up again onto the daily time frame. You know, it well could break back up again, test some of these targets. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to go to 45 bucks tomorrow, but if it does manage to move back up again, test the top side of what is this potential you know, there's the idea of that being parallel to the support or resistance there and you're giving yourself a channel. At one point, one free extension comes in, test those level and bounces. Then you could get a move easily, 100% move from there. Test it from 0 spot 0.64 up to 1 spot 4, maybe even. <sighs> eh, so you, sir. So that's what it is with VRM. What a show! I flip an egg, you know? I mean, if we were to put all that together, right, I swear to goodness. There's a lot of days went into this one. I really hope it helps. Rocky's got a show on Wednesday. I expect to see everybody there. Right? It's not like you can get away with it because I'll catch you. I'll catch you if you're not. And uh, thanks so much. If you want to support me, it's super easy way to do it is to hit that like and subscribe button. And it's really... I, you can share it on your social media profiles. I go down well there. Share your friends and family. You could justify why it is that you think trading makes lots of money based on the fact that I can show it happening on the regular, right? So it's not Hocus Pocus, not Mystic Meg. It's something I've got a demonstrable proven track record of on these videos on YouTube, right? You know, you've seen them. Hit that like button. And um, super easy to support the channel in that way. You can do the whole community a favor by tuning in to Rocky Outcrop show. That's the heart of it. The Discord's born off the back of it and the community live there. You join that channel, hit that like button, watch that show, boost that. That helps everybody. And then if you have the means and you want to, links in the below, in the description below for more. And there's obviously the best way you can learn to do this for yourself is the Technical Analysis School and the Discord community. Join up on Rocky's Patreon. And if you want to support me, same deal. Patreon, links below. Thanks very much. It's appreciated. I'll always be here for you. Thank you very much. Crypto one coming up next. Might put that out later on. But crypto's moving right now. <laughs> I can't stop. Actually, I've got an important thing to do tomorrow. But anyway, who hasn't? Every day is important. Right. Thanks very much. See you guys soon.